and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So in this episode, I'm discussing the fourth overall entry into the Halloween franchise, kickstarted by one of horror's greats, John Carpenter. The 1988 slasher Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, as directed by Dwight H. Little. The film is a direct sequel to the second movie in the series, the 1981 slasher Halloween 2, and not, confusingly, a sequel to the third movie, 1982's Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Which had nothing, which which is which, had nothing at all to do with the canon in which Michael Myers slaughters his unsuspecting victims. In fact, Myers sat that one out, uh, with the film being a weird mixture of witchcraft and science fiction, telling its own standalone story, which left fans bewildered and bemused uh, as to just exactly what had happened to their masked menace. And so, yes, set some ten years later than the events of the first two movies, this one brings back the series' iconic antagonist with a bang. Ever since the events that transpired at the end of the second movie, Michael Myers, as played by Tom Marga and George P. Wilbur's, uh, Wilbur, sorry, uh, have been in a coma under the watchful eye of Dr. Sam Loomis, as played once again by Donald Pleasance, who himself was thrown from the explosion he set as a trap for Michael all of those years ago, surviving if only to ensure that this monster never wreaks havoc on the sleepy suburb of Haddonfield ever again. Unfortunately, as one could probably expect and predict, keeping Michael away from Haddonfield is like trying to stop being stung by a wasp. Run all you want, but that thing is still going to keep on coming. And indeed, during transport to another facility, Michael awakes and seizes his chance to escape. With Loomis out on his tail, but always two steps behind, Michael indeed makes it back to Haddonfield, leaving a wake of destruction in his path where he then proceeds to track down and stalk one of his remaining relatives. Seven-year-old Jamie Lloyd, as played by Danielle Harris, the daughter of Laurie Strode, who, of course, Michael had been pursuing in the first two movies. With Jamie's life on the line, the community rally to put a stop to Michael's reign of terror, but when faced with such a relenting force of evil, even Loomis struggles to find a way through yet another terrifying Halloween night. Well, firstly, let's just say, it was certainly nice to have Michael Myers back on form to treat us to yet another slash fest as he once again looks to annihilate one of his family members. I mean, imagine, imagine finding out on This Is Your Life that Michael was one of your long lost relatives many times removed. Terrifying. It, yeah, he really doesn't seem to be keen on any of them at all, and thanks to blabber mouths like those in this film, trying to keep such a secret is pretty much a futile effort. This was the first Halloween movies, or first of the Halloween movies, if you like, not to be connected with the franchise's original front runners, John Carpenter and Deborah Hill, who wanted nothing more to do with the series at this point, bar the use of Carpenter's iconic theme from the first two Halloween movies, which is reprised and reprised um, at varying levels and intervals in order to keep us kind of appraised of Michael's whereabouts and intentions, just in case they were never that clear. So, yeah, I mean, but considering this, the film isn't all as bad as you might expect. It captures the essence of the second instalment pretty well, Provides at least a reasonably believable rationale for Michael and Loomis' survival after being blown sky high at the end of the second, and gives us a plausible ish continuation for yet another visit to Haddonfield. Ad move. But Loomis <laughs> remains obsessed with Michael as always, and again, nobody else seems to give a. He's running around proclaiming doom and gloom, and everybody else is simply taking it in their stride in total disbelief that a comatose patient would just simply restart his killing spree some ten years later. Well, they simply just don't know Michael all that well, do they? Presence does a fantastic job bringing Loomis back with the same urgent despair as he ever did, reprising a role he now fits so well by this point. As much a part of Halloween as part of the franchise, if you like, as Michael himself. 
And in this instalment, he even has a bit of a road trip adventure of his own, taking in a bit of local colour along the way. To be fair, this movie is a lot lighter than its predecessors. It has a bit more of a sense of humour and doesn't kind of take itself too seriously for the most part. There is a couple of tongue-in-cheek moments that just manage to lift the overall tone of the movie. Not totally slapstick or outrageous, but just, just enough to keep things kind of a bit more casual than we have perhaps seen up to this point. Myers is still quite the presence and again... They have some great fun with the character and some of the kills, for sure. He's certainly a lot more methodical this time around, making sure that some of his kills work to his advantage, like couldn't the power, for instance. A lot more resourceful, some creatively useful kills, for sure. And still quite inventive. Michael is certainly getting very good at multitasking, and indeed, seemingly teleporting, as he does seem to be everywhere all at once, which does seem all a little bit too convenient, perhaps lazy, uh, and a little bit all too easy. One thing I found that certainly worked in the movie's favour for me was that we do get to spend more time with each of the main characters, which does expand on the story. Trying its hand at a level of emotional involvement, that whilst I wouldn't say the movie is all that suspenseful in the end, it does a decent enough job as it does crank itself up, and Daniel Harris as Jamie Lloyd certainly does a decent job at instilling the fear and paranoia leading to quite the spook house finale. I would admit that it does feel a lot more cut and paste than the previous entries in the franchise, especially with regards to the editing, which does feel a bit, well, quite choppy. And there is a sense that we've kind of moved more so into straightforward slasher territory with a more generic stance at times. And whilst, yes, we do maintain some of the first-person points of view, which have kind of been synonymous with the, well, Michael's sort of outings in the first two movies, um, with a view to kind of witnessing the events through Michael's eyes, it just never feels quite as intimate that uh, it did in the previous instalments, to be fair. Almost like we're kind of taking more of a passing glance, never really get, letting us get too closely connected with anything, really. Overall, when all's said and done, despite the lack of involvement from either John Carpenter or Deborah Hill, this is actually a pretty decent Halloween movie. At least it actually has Michael Myers in it. It's reasonably well-paced, entertaining, and definitely has a couple of decently inventive kills. Myers certainly showing off his skills and ensuring each kill counts. It doesn't take itself too seriously, which does offer a bit more of a lighter touch, but still yields a decent showdown by the end, with Michael going all out to ensure he is the only remaining member of his family. And then he does wonder why nobody ever turns up to his Christmas parties. So, that brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching, I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like, please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, trailer reactions and other movie related content. Absolutely loved Having you at South First Movie Talk and definitely love to have you back. Most of all, just thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.